you have you with us. We've got the American League Wild Card Series on the show. It's the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Minnesota Twins. Alongside Chris Singleton, I'm John Shelby. A big game two in store for us here today, Chris. Absolutely, and it might seem like there's not as much pressure if you've already got a win in game one, but they're dying to close this series out right here and now. The last thing they want is to lose the momentum and go into a do or die game three. That's a lot of pressure. Sometimes it feels like every game in a three game series is do or die. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. So just about set now. And on the mound in this one, Chris Paddock. Well, that 12 to 6 curveball explodes out of the hand. And because he's able to throw the high fastball at the top of the strike zone for a strike, hitters commit to that pitch. And before they know it, they're swinging over the top of that curveball. And now for the Jays, Geraldo Perdomo. Line drive. And foul ball. Goes up empty. Gosh, a little late on the breaking ball. I don't think he recognized it out of the hand. Just a little tardy. We'll have to regroup here. Spoils the two strike pitch, and he'll see another. Bounced up the middle. Correa. Tosses the first. One out in the top of the first. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Blue Jays. Chris, this is a lineup offensively that could be really good for years to come. They're deep, first and foremost, but the way that they can manipulate their personnel for matchups and everything else, it's uh, very intelligent the way that they use their team. And I, I think it creates a little bit of a... Uh, uncertainty for opposing teams especially in a big game big series one down base is empty that one down the line over to first oh. and a couple of quick outs that is the first base Two outs, base is empty. So up next for Toronto, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both what righties up? and lefties. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris, and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup, and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. Hey. Next offering is in for a strike. Two outs, space is empty. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. And the 2-2. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. And down on strikes he goes. And the Blue Jays go down one, two, three. Nothing to do it for the Blue Jays. The Twins coming up, no score. You're watching the American League Wild Card Series on the show. in Minnesota and today's starter Jose Barrios four pitch guy he's got some options to work with in terms of keeping hitters off balance so we'll see how he decides to utilize those weapons through this start here and whether or not he's able to mix them all in early or if he wants to hold something back a little bit later maybe second third time through the order and give them something they haven't seen 
It's tough when you know a guy's got that in his back pocket. As a hitter, oh, you it. really have to stay on your toes. Edouard Julien stands in now, looks at that one inside. That clips the corner. That one ripped. Springer makes the grab one down. Let's take a look at our lineup. The sluggers in this lineup might not be too happy about the fact that the wind is blowing in today, Chris. Yeah, and you hear pitchers talk about how good it feels when the wind is at their back. And for hitters, you almost feel like beyond just the pitcher coming at you, you've got this other force coming against you. So important to try to get on top of the ball in terms of hitting line drives, you know, maybe really hard ground balls with a good exit velocity that'll get you a base hit because it's very frustrating. You just hit one on the screws, think it's going to go out of the ballpark, and an outfielder is camped underneath it in front of the warning track. Here comes the 0 1. And a foul ball. And a pitch. That misses. And a count one and two. And that one missing low. He's trying to stay down in the zone, but the hitter just will not chase. Now back in a 2 2 count, he's going to have to go to something else to get him out. The 2 2 on the way. And okay. another ball. On the ground. Biggio throws the first in time. Here tonight, an efficient start to the home first two away. Here's Royce Lewis. This to center field. Kiermaier moving under it. And puts the squeeze on that one. And that is that. Scoreless after one. Second inning Leading set to go. DJ. And now the Toronto the cleanup DJ. hitter, Jack Peterson. John. Peterson. Paddock back to work. And ball one. The strategy around starting pitchers in the postseason, it's really changed in recent years. Managers are pulling starters earlier, making a strong bullpen essential for a championship team. And yeah, that one upstairs. Yeah, I think with starting pitchers, they're not going as deep in the postseason because managers aren't willing to let them get knocked around and put a game out of reach. Most skippers have a quicker hook this time of the year. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. Larnick balls it in, and there's one away. That the catch at number nine. Now it's yeah. Jansen in the head. Yeah. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. That clips the corner. In for a strike, and it's nothing in two. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches down an 0-2 hole. He's going to have to battle, hope he gets a mistake. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. No score here in the second. Ground ball up the middle, Julian. Throws to first in time. It's the catcher by a step. That is good. The right field. And the batter is George Springer. 
Springer plays an important role for this team in the clubhouse, Boog. I mean, he can hit home runs, which is great, but he also brings a lot to the club away from the field, too. And that's in for a strike. and a miss as he chases that one darting no out of the zone. Two outs. Swings through it and that's a strikeout. No runs, no hits, no errors. Now to the bottom of the second. No score. And now it's going to be Byron Buxton. And the pitch. Barrios, a former Gold Glove winner, he features a sinker, a slur, a four-seamer, and he works in a changeup. That's a little bit low. Eric Summersgill, our plate umpire. One thing to watch out for, Boog, is what side of the plate Summers Gill might be favoring. He usually sets up at an angle. Pitchers sometimes will try to figure that out early so they can attack that spot and get as many strike calls as possible. The pitch. And there's a foul ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Had him way out front of the slur. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error. But some way you got to find a way to shorten up the swing. The go-ahead run is at first here in game two. Got the back going too soon at strike two. Just off the outside edge. And a count one and two. At the belt and fires. Got him. That's out number three. One left for Minnesota. We'll move to the third with no score.
And we're back. Leading and off now off. it's Dalton Varsho. The left number 20. Varsho measures 5 feet 10 inches, hitting seventh in today's lineup, and he took home a gold glove in 2024. First oh. pitch doesn't find the zone. Well, oh, he's one, so no great play. about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. a one-two. Fouls it back with two strikes. Three. Swing for the strikeout. Couldn't hit the fastball at the knees. He's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field. And he's out in front there. Just needs to let the ball travel a little more and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. Isaiah Kiner Falefa up to the plate. And that one fouled off. One out, base is empty. Close there, and it's one and two. 0 2 pitch that far out of the zone gives the hitter a little confidence that maybe he can climb back into this at bat. Stays alive. And a good eye there. Really good take, especially with two strikes. And that one is lifted in the air. Kepler falls it in for the out. That's out number two. Kevin Biggio up to the plate. That's down and in. the strike the pitch hit hard on the ground is short not in time no, and he reaches not. safely with two outs you just want to find a way to keep the line moving for the next guy so an infield single right there does the job nicely done just putting it in play and getting down to first to keep this inning alive you never know what might come next as a result to the top of the lineup and the batter will be the shortstop Geraldo Perdomo grounded out his first time just oh, missed black. in the air to left center that gets down for a hit. So that's two straight two out hits. Now that the center field. Here's Kiermeyer now. Rounded out his first time up. And that's off the inside edge. And that is ball one. The Blue Jays with a chance to score first here in game two of the wild card series. That's way outside, and it's 2 0. Oh. 
Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. And that's outside. And that's ball three. See if he gives them anything to hit here. And that'll load the bases. Now that sets up a really big at bat in this game. These are the moments where everyone in the stadium gets really locked in. Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. His first at bat was a strikeout. Right through there for a strike. He's been known to jump all over the first pitch, so that seems like a missed opportunity right there. Base is loaded, two down. Adrenaline, we can see it right there, and sometimes you just gotta let it out. That's an outstanding job of taking that, executing, and getting out of a tough inning. Back at Target Field, except for the bottom of the third. Now it's the DH, Matt Walmer. And a pitch. That one missed. Count one and oh. Next offering is in for a strike. And that's downstairs and outside. The pitch. Late that time, and it's strike two. Do that fastball right by him, slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. Swings and misses, struck him out. Well, he hadn't seen that change up the entire at bat until that put away pitch. It's pretty tough to deal with as a hitter. You're up there battling, trying to read and react with two strikes, and then all of a sudden the pitch comes out of nowhere, and it's a good changeup. It's just almost impossible to hit it when you haven't seen it. Here's Trevor Larnick. On the ground, right side, Biggio. Gets it to first. And two straight set down to begin the bottom of the third. Now that second baseman. Back to the leadoff spot in the Twins lineup. And next for Minnesota, Edouard Julien. And there's a the ball. Ball one, no strike. Just missed. The pitch. In the air, right field. And that is Springer. He makes the grab. And that is that. So they make short work of him there. We head to the fourth inning now in game two. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. in Minnesota. John Chompy with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Jack Peterson. Now the right-hander ready to go. Still no score. 
Ball nope. one there. Oh. Well, these Jays, as this game goes on, have to be more disciplined at the plate. They're chasing a lot of pitches outside the zone, and those oh, chases dude. are turning into a bunch of outs. Can they turn that around and stay within the zone? We'll see, but I think they have to. Hey. And a swing to miss. And another ball. He's been pitching well, but going through this middle of the order second time through, we'll see what kind of adjustments are being made. 3 1, and he couldn't come up with it. I don't think he really wanted to pitch to him right there, anyhow. Go ahead, run on base. And here's the catcher, Danny Jansen, over one so far. First offering, and it just misses. Fourth inning underway, no score. In the air to left, down the line. He's under it. And it'll be George Springer to step to the plate. Struck out on just three pitches last time. And downstairs. Count one and oh. Righty delivers. Rudder takes off. In the air, right field. And that'll fall for a base hit. And they'll have runners at the corners after a one-out single. With the way defenders track down balls these days, I mean, going from the infield and in the outfield, there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that. But there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a long dart in there, and he found a way. Runner in scoring position now, and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. And now Dalton Varsho upstairs. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground. I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. Ball tied up. Top half of inning number four. That's nope. a little bit low. Well, it looks more focused at the plate and working the count after that first at bat strikeout. On the ground, right side. Oh, great stop. Kirilov toss the second. On the first, save. So they get one, but a really nice try there. I promise you, they're guys that get a little bit faster when they can smell an RBI. That was a possible inning, ending double play. Great hustle, and he gets rewarded with the RBI because of it. And here is Isaiah kiner Falefa. Slide to right his first time. There's the strike. And here it comes. On the ground to third. Whips it to first. And that'll do it. So one run on one hit, no errors, and a runner left. And midway in the fourth, it's the Blue Jays one, and the Twins nothing. Wild card series, game two. And now for the Twins, Alex Kirilov. Barrios back to work. Oh. And takes low ball for one, ball no one. Play. 
up the middle. Biggio tosses to first. Leadoff hitter retired in the fourth. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Royce Lewis getting ready to hit. 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. Fouls it away. Kicks and deals. Fouls that off to the left and will do it again. Next pitch is downstairs. One ball, two strikes, count. Wouldn't oh, chase that time. Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. The pitch. Hey. Goose down looking. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Here's Byron Buxton. There's a strike. Oh, one's the count. The Twins trailing by a run here in the second game of the series. Strike two. Not sure if he could be in more of a group. Looks really relaxed. He's retired seven straight. This guy's feeling it right now. That misses the zone. Now one and two. Righty to the plate. Out to short. Fires over to Guerrero. Three up, three down, inning over. Offense held a check there. We're headed to the fifth. It's the Blue Jays one and the Twins nothing. We go to the top of the fifth. Now it's the second baseman, Kevin Biggio. The wind of the pitch. That's Whoa, outside. Down. One and oh. Left hand hitter waits. That one fouled off. And to the zone, call the strike. And the count is one and two. And this guy's got a great feel for his breaking ball today. Swing and a miss. Curveball on the dirt. Beats him for the first out, and that completes the strikeout. Well, that's pretty much the dream two-strike curveball. If you're the pitcher, hard downward break at the very end that just dips below the swing path. And they say pitchers want to try to bounce that pitch right on top of the plate. So that was exactly what he was looking for on the mound. So up next, Geraldo Perdomo, one for two. That one, one not close. Ball one. One 
down, base is empty. Up the middle. What a stop to his knee, the throw, and that's a great play for the end. Great reaction there to get to the baseball, secure it, and then no time to get up the ball. Balls from one knee. That's a guy who's got a lot of confidence in his arm strength and accuracy. Here's Kevin Kiermaier. Chopped left side. Correa fires the first on the run. Oh. And that is the inning. Blue Jays go down in order, but they're on top, 1-0. Welcome back to the ballpark. Here's the catcher, Ryan Jeffers. And a pitch. Swings and misses. It's all one. Now that's that slope right there. He threw it extremely well. Talk about just a ton of breaks. So tough to get that barrel to. And it's one and one. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Close, but call the ball. And that's ball two. He's gone off speed. He needs to elevate here with two strikes out of the zone. And that's down in the way. Now this three ball count down in the ball game. You've got to be very selective. Take your walk if they'll give it to you. That one is absolutely belted. It's out of here. That'll fire up the dugout. It's 1-1. One, one. Listen to these fans. This place is absolutely buzzing right now. You can feel the energy all the way up here in our broadcast booth. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got hurt. Here's Carlos Correa. Went down looking on three pitches last time. Let's see if he can be a little more aggressive nope, right here. Close one. Doesn't get the call. Ball one. Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up, and you start to expect a big inning. The 1-0. And that's a strike. the middle for Domo. Throws the first, and that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. That's a good recovery, though, after giving up the home run. Not allowing it to stay in the head, but going to work at the next hitter, and a tough one with that. Max Kepler at the plate. Struck out swinging his first time. That's off the mark, and that's ball one. Swing and that ball smashed on the line. Garsho snags it for the second out. Man, that's one of those at bats where you have to remind yourself it's about the process. He did everything right right there. Nothing to show for it, but in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at bat. Walton hey. in the box now. No balls in a strike. All one for count. Two down, base is empty, but one run across. Last half of the inning, number five. There's your strike. Field two. Ground ball right side. Biggio tosses to first. That's the third out. Inning over. But a solo home run for the Twins. All even at one apiece. Top of the sixth inning, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. now. 
Singing, he's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? Well, just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Laddie measures six feet, two inches, 245 pounds, and he's a former All-Star Game MVP. Why to kick the pitch? Swings and misses. It's a strikeout. Pull the string of the changeup. We'll take a look at the sequence on that three-pitch strikeout. Headed off with a couple of fastballs up in the zone, kind of challenging him to catch up. And that really opened up the bottom part of the strike zone because as a hitter, you're still thinking he might climb the ladder on you even more. Pretty much didn't stand a chance on that good changeup. Here's Jack Peterson. That one's in there, all in one. Sliced hard, but foul. The wind of the pitch. Just missed. His understanding of the strike zone, very impressive. That was a very close 0-2 fastball. I just don't know how you take that. That nope. just misses. The count now, 2-2. Two and two. center field that's back there gone he made him pay for that one and they jump out front it's 2-1 that's a fun way to take the lead just hit one out of the park pitch he wanted to hit spit on some other pitches in this at bat was very patient and it paid off Danny Jansen to hit here and first offering is fouled off at the knees for a strike. One run across in the frame so far, and we're in the top half of the sixth. Now one close rule to ball, and that's ball one. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from it back to it back. That's, ball three. That's down and in. Two balls, two strikes. Down on strikes. Picks up strikeout number seven. A big power guy right there and generating so much bat speed. It's hard to bring that to a halt once you've committed. They try to check the swing, just couldn't do it. Here's George Springer. That ball one's that upstairs, time. ball one. And that is ball one. And you know that else? skips in the dirt. Right-hander kicks, deals. That no. one inside, and now 3-0. and oh.
And he deals. Hey! I got three and two. And they'll do it again. Two down, nobody on. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A.B. going. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Two outs. Right side. Kepler drifts towards it. Brings it in for the third out. Toronto picks up one on this homer, and it's now a 2-1 ball game. Bottom of the six, and now for the Twins, Trevor Larnick. The left field. And the right hater back to work. Oh. That one missed. I played our players, trying to tighten things up a little bit. Left hand batter waits. Fastball for a strike. And it's one and one. Swings through that one out in front that one time. Ball, two strikes. Here's a one-two. Swung on, belted. Kiermaier on the move, racing back. Pulls it in on the warning track. Thought that was a no-doubter. Like the wind was holding that in this ballpark. Edouard Julien now at the plate. Strike. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. It usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Fought off foul. Down the left field line, put the extra bases. Now he'll turn for second. And now the tying run is in the scoring position. Man, those are the types of hits where you don't feel any vibration in your hands whatsoever. Such a good feeling. When you connect and it jumps off your back like that, you're thinking double at the very least. But a good swing on it, and man, he wasn't pulled at all. Now a pretty big impact coming up with a chance to even this ball game up. Man, it's second with one away. Here's Alex Kirilov. And that's outside. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit is probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. With the go-ahead run at the plate here in the bottom of the sixth. Trying to check his swing. Appeal to third. No, he held up. pitch that one drilled left field and there's two down now that the third base now the third baseman Royce Lewis outfield playing very deep not wanting anything over their heads Which is outside, ball one. Run. Runner at second, two down. Next hey. offering in there for a strike. Oh, and the count okay. one and one. And the right.
right hander deals. Swing and a ball lifted left field. He's under it. Brings it in. And that is the inning. No runs, one hit, a double, no errors, and one man left. We head to the seventh now in game two. Blue Jays two, and the Twins one. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Caleb Thielbar. Just trying to keep this one close here. This is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. And now for the Jays, Dalton Varsho. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. And what you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Lifted in the air, right center field. Sizing this one up. One down. Almost a loud start to the inning on that first pitch. Man, he's going to walk that one back, no doubt. Isaiah Kiner-Falefa digs in now. This is just off the outside edge. I think that was a strike. One down, base is empty. And there's the strike. One ball, one strike. Hard hit, right side. Sends it to first. That takes care of Connor Falefa. And next for Toronto, Kevin Biggio. Chopped out in front of the plate. Whips it to Carolina. And they get Biggio for the out. And that is that. Nothing doing for the offense that time. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. Blue Jays two, and the Twins one. Back at target field, bottom of the seventh, leading off Byron Buxton. Barrios back to work. Ball is upstairs. Double barreled action in the bullpen. Eric Swanson getting loose out there. Green warming up as well. Next yep. offering is down low. Just missed. Who hasn't fallen behind in the count like this all day. He's in danger of walking his first batter right here. Looking to get the tying run on base. And there's the automatic. And he walked him. Pitch count's getting up there now. Not saying that's the reason for this walk, but this is the point in the game when every side of Raven starts to get everyone's attention. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. That's all for Jose Barrios, and we'll be back with their first arm out of the pen after a quick break. The new pitcher in the game, Jimmy Garcia. These are the spots where levers really make a name for themselves, late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. No outs, runner at first. So up next for Minnesota, Ryan Jeffers. He's already homered here in this one. That's in there. That's strike one. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Swing and a miss. And that is strike two. With a single base runner because of all the power, they are dangerous to tie this thing up or take the lead. And a pitch. Got him looking. And that's the first out. 
Dude, he was shopping at the buckle right there, the way that slider no, made no, it. was just nasty. Stop. And here comes Carlos Correa. Garcia throw over. Buxton back in there. He's got plus speed, but in this situation, all eyes are going to be over there trying to keep his lead tight. That one out to right. Springer drifts towards it. Drops into the glove. Two away down. Hey, man, four pitches, two outs. That is an excellent pace. Kepler. And now the right fielder, Max Kepler. Going with pretty good speed over there at first base. I think the pitcher's got to slow everything down, hold the ball a little bit, step off, just try to break the rhythm and timing of a potential base dealer. Buxton on the run. And it's safe. It's a stolen base. Singy, he definitely showed off the wheels there. Yeah, and it turned out to be a bang-bang play. StatCast gives us the data, and that stolen base wasn't possible without that sprint speed. Next oh, offering is downstairs. Holding on to a one-run lead here in the late stages of game two. Swing and a pop-off in foul ground. Jansen drifts towards it, squeezes it, and the inning is over. Twins wind up stranding one, and they trail it here, two to one. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Steven Oker. Pretty tight yeah. game, so they're looking for quality oh, pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. And now the shortstop, Geraldo Perdomo. One for three. Well, both sides Perdomo. equally as strong, so not a good time to try to turn him around with a relief pitcher and put him on the other side of the plate. And a pitch. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle, allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. Here's the center fielder, Kevin Kiermeyer. Step off throw to first, hey. and he's back in on a dive. Ball and the first one. pitch misses for ball one. Perdomo gets his lead at first with nobody out. And another ball. And a strike in there. <laughs> On a line, base hit. Lead runner around second. And now runners at the corners, nobody out. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. will hit next. Bowl for three with three strikeouts. Singy, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He's the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off of the leadership that he shows on and off the field. First pitch misses. One, no in the infield at the corners. Don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. Right through there for a strike. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. 
In comes some insurance as the runner scores from third. It's 3-1. Runner stops at third, and they're at the corners with nobody out. Couldn't get any air under it, but he smoked that ball back up the middle. Timing was just perfect. Got great wood on it, and there's just no chance for the infielders with how hard he hit it. And now Jack Peterson, he had a big swing back in the six. The solo shot that figures into this game in a pretty big way right now. Yeah, that was a big swing of the bat, and he's going to be looking for more, trying to add on to this lead right here. That's inside, and it's one to no. He's getting a little frustrated out there on the mound, getting hit around a little bit. Let's see if he can settle himself down. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. Line drive, base hit. In comes the run from third to add on. It's 4-1. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. That pretty much split the zone down the middle, and those are the ones where you got to make a pay. Here's a new pitcher from the pen, Josh Stamach. And this could be a pretty critical point in this game. They're hoping he's the guy to keep him within striking distance. Here's the Toronto catcher, Danny Jansen. Over three, a fly out, a ground out, and a strikeout. And a foul ball. Stamont. He's kind of a prototypical bullpen arm in today's game. Electric stuff, that results in a ton of strikeouts in a tough spot like this. That is a big-time benefit. And there's a foul ball. Two runs across in the inning, and we're in the top of the eighth. Obviously, that was nowhere near the strike zone. By the time it got to the plate, people at home watching are thinking, what's he swinging at? But I'll tell you, some of the break guys snap off these days is just devastating. It can be so tough to recognize where a pitch like that's going to end up. Now it's the right fielder, George Springer. Wouldn't chase that time. Oh, as a hitter, when a guy like this comes into the game, you feel like he's standing on top of you, and it's just attack mode coming right at you, expecting to get a swing and miss. Still only one out here in the inning. That clips the corner. Activity in the bullpen. Griffin Jacks up and loosening in the pen. Two on, one out. And now two balls and a strike. Bounce to the left side. Lewis goes to second for one. And that's two. They put two on the board on four hits, no errors, and a runner left. Last half of the eighth coming up. It's the Blue Jays four and the Twins one. Back down, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Eric Swanson. Now, number Eric. Matt Wallman getting ready to hit. The Twins in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff, man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. And the pitch. 
Well, it's critical Damn. right here that they bear down and turn in some oh, quality at bats, try to chip away at that lead because if it gets to the ninth, that closer's coming in. The pitch. Close, but called a ball. And now it's even one and one. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Jordan Romano getting ready to go. The one one is fouled off. Foul ball, he stays alive. And a one two. Just misses with that one. Next pitch is downstairs. And the righty deals. Got him looking. He battled for a long time, but it finishes with a strikeout. You can't be mad at yourself after an at-bat like that one. And next for Minnesota, Trevor Larnick. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. The Twins trailing by three. Here are the bottom half of the eighth inning. Good eye right there. I got a ball, one strike. One down, base is empty. Drifts towards it. He's got it, and there's two away. Now bad. The second base. So the lineup flips over. Edmar Julien, the next to hit. Right through there for a strike. There it was. Oh, oh, here it is. Hit it. He gets a take. Gets a head and a count. Two down. Nobody on. This one in the air center field. Brings it in with a nice running grab. And that will end the inning. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Griffin Jacks. So digging in, Dalton Varsho. And here it comes. That one pushed foul out of play off to the left. Now the 0-1. Swing and a foul back. That's out of play. The pitch. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. And a strike out for the first out here in the ninth. So up next for Toronto, Isaiah kiner falefa Jacks, a 6-2 righty, 29 years old, and he was a third-round pick back in 2016. And that's in the dirt. Minnesota's bullpen with some action. Justin Topa, the hard-throwing righty, is up and loosening. At 
the belt and fires. Two ball, no strike. Base is empty, one away here at the top of the ninth. Next That's one ball misses, three. ball three. Three and oh. Kevin Biggio digs in now. Check on the runner. Connor Falefa dives back in. Up and in. One and oh. He was looking for some firewood right there. I tell you what, if you're not out in front, swing at that pitch. You'll be looking for a new bat. Righty to the play. And that one's a little bit low. And now 2-0. Oh. Connor Falefa at first, one gone. And it is two in a row. Right-handed reliever. Not three close balls. with that one. And now three balls and a strike. Kicks and fires. And a foul ball. Kicks and deals. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Ripped on a line. He's got it. Not fooled at all right there. He was clearly all over it, but sometimes you hit it too hard and right at someone. You're looking for one of those loop hits to get a knock sometimes. So the batting order turns over. Here's the shortstop at the play. Geraldo Perdomo. Strike one. Move to first. Oh, Connor Falefa dives back in. The nope, shortstop the takes the ball. The 1 1 is fouled off. Two outs. Hammers that one. Curling down the line and foul. Oh, and another ball. Inside. Wouldn't Hell chase that time. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. No. So now two on and two outs. Now a great back and forth in that at bat. He had to play off some really close pitches, and somehow Boogie found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. Kiermaier stands in now and watches strike one. Some hitters are just more confident they can track that first pitch out of the hand of the pitcher. They don't care if they fall behind or long. Strike two. Good late sink oh, on that oh, fastball. Right. Out of the hand looks so good. And then by the time he gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. 
That one misses. Now one and two. First and second, two down. Here in the second game of the series. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And that'll do it. Two left on. Two, three, four, set to hit in the bottom of the ninth. It's the Blue Jays four and the Twins one. Welcome back, and here comes the closer, Jordan Romano. I think closer has to be one of the toughest jobs in baseball. That we see a pretty high turnover rate because of it. Every outing seems to be high pressure, this one included. We'll see if he can wrap up the win and get himself a save. At the play, Alex Kirilov. Pitch. There's a strike. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Righty delivers. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Just oh, off the back. inside corner, and it's two and two. Swinging. Some high cheese for strike three. With that kind of velocity and elevated fastball, yeah, even if it's still in the strike zone, can be tough for hitters to get on top of. Here's the third baseman, Royce Lewis. 0 for 3 with two flyouts and a strikeout. Clips the corner, strike one. And ball one. Yeah. Looking to get something going. This is the guy you want at the plate. He's been great for this team. He is a professional hitter. One down, base is empty. Oh, Pitch misses, there. and it's two and one. And that clips the inside corner. Well, so many hard-throwing relievers in the game these days, you would think that hitters have made the adjustment, but I don't know if you ever get used to it. Just pumping gas out of the bullpen. So hard to play catch-up. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. This is definitely it's what a team good. likes to see out of their closer. Come in and just destroy all the home. First two batters, two strikeouts. See if he can strike out the side. Buxton stands in with two away as he takes a ball. The Twins trailing by three here in the last half of inning number nine. Swings through that one for strike one. That was a certain point where you have to commit to what you think you see, and he guessed wrong right there. Nasty slider with just terrific bite at the end. The Twins down to their final strike. Ball two. Pitch misses there. Ball two. Two ball, two strike. Two down, nobody on. Spoils the two strike pitch, and he'll see another. Just misses three and two now. That turns out to be a really good take right there, but you don't want to end this game with the bat on your shoulder. 
Two down, nobody on. We're in the last half of the ninth inning. Outside, and that is ball four. Second walk of the game for him, and he's been really patient at the play. The game plan that he's sticking to, he's just not going outside of what he's looking for. Brian Jeffers at the play. He's already homered in this game. There's a strike. Good heater at 98. Well, if he's going to steal second, you want him to go early in the count. That way he's not a distraction to the hitter at the plate. Go ahead and get it out of the way so the hitter can focus on the pitch. That nope. one off the mark. One ball, one strike. Buxton off the first with two away. Right-hander kicks, deals. Three. Got him. And the crowd goes home disappointed as this one draws to a close. numbers show a great performance on the mound in this one. Absolutely, and that really set the tone from the beginning. A fantastic effort. 4-1 the final here today. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon. Tonight's favorite event at Mark Green.